Hey, you guys know on Urban Monk TV, we love anything that is two-wheeled and motorized, and that includes electric scooters. A while back, I did a video on how to assemble some Razor EcoSmart scooters. Since then, I have wanted to do this video for a long time. Uh, this is the range and a review of the Razor brand EcoSmart electric scooters. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So I've got these two scooters that I bought three plus years ago for my daughters and uh, they've used them but interestingly one of them has been used a lot more than the other because it happens to be the one that is just sitting out from the wall and so that one gets grabbed all the time. What that does is gives me a unique opportunity to not only give three years worth of ownership uh, experience uh, on, on owning one of these, but it also gives me the opportunity to test the range of the exact same machine out of the box or nearly out of the box and after years of being discharged and recharged. So um, one of these things has been through so many more discharge and recharge cycles. The other one has been through, I don't know, maybe 10 cycles like that. So I'm calling that one the new out of the box. And the other one has had many, many, many cycles. Um, in general, I wanna talk about these things uh, later on and just give a review, but first let's talk about how I'm going to set up my test for the range on these things. So yeah, as I mentioned, there's two of these things and the one toward the outside gets used far more often because we just grab that one and we go. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is they've both been charging uh, for days now. They're both fully charged, green lights on each charger. And the other thing I'm going to do is make sure that the tire pressure in all tires, meaning four in this case, two wheeled machine, two machines, are all the same. I will tell you this, if you're thinking about buying one of these or you just did, low tire pressure will be the number one thing that will drain your range uh, in short order. So keep your tire pressure up. It's got like 30 PSI. Okay, so I didn't bother showing it, but I've gone through both scooters and all tires are the same tire pressure. Um, Essentially, they, they just roll smoother with less resistance, less drag at the ground where the tire meets the ground. And that drag is not then pulling when you have full air pressure. Uh, it's not pulling or dragging on the motor and uh, the, the scooter will propel itself more easily and you get longer range. So keep your tire pressure up. Um, the next thing I need to do is figure out what track or path I'm gonna use um, there's hills around here, very significant ones, and going up a grade on these scooters will drain the battery faster. So something to think about. Um, for the purposes of this test and keeping things equal, I'm going to find a track that I can use to measure the range here that is flat all the way around. Okay, so one of the first things I've done is find a flat piece of ground um, I live in the foothills around Los Angeles and, um, you know, flat ground, totally flat is hard to find, but there's actually this man-made lake here and, of course, a lake has got to be flat around it and there's a road that circles this thing. So, I'm going to set the trip odometer on my car and drive one loop around this lake and note what that distance is 
uh, and there's my track, right? Okay, there's my odometer set to zero, so let's start. So lakes have to be flat, right, or otherwise the water flows out of them. So this is flat ground. I'll see how far this is around. Um, what there is on this track is essentially it's, it's a square with stop signs at three corners. So I am going to make full and complete stops at all the corners because, uh, you know, in normal everyday use with these scooters, you don't just go and never stop until you hit your destination. Um, so I believe that that is probably a good mimic of uh, real life. And I'll be right back with the total distance here and then we'll have an idea. Well, here, I'll, I'll say this. From my starting point to the first stop sign is looking to be about, it says 0.4 miles right now might end up being 0.5 there's half a mile right there so that first stop sign is a little over uh, four tenths of a mile this is the second stop sign on my test I'm going to be sticking to the street and stay off the sidewalks uh, there's a lot of pedestrians obviously here's the final stop sign that's at 0.9 miles. And I'm back to where I started and it, I'm at exactly one mile. It actually is just slightly more than that, but not a tenth. So I'm gonna call my track 1.05 miles. Just to confirm, I'm gonna continue driving until I get 1.1 and just see if I am halfway between where it clicked over um, I want to be as accurate as I can about this range number. Okay. So we're going to do scooter number one here. Morning. And to keep things the same, I actually transported the scooter here in the car. So both scooters are going to start from the same spot on the same flat track. Did you walk yesterday? Yes, yeah. actually I did. I walked up in the... So what about my speed? You know, I'm gonna go full bore here. Full speed on these things is a nice, comfortable speed uh, with traffic. Um, if I had to make a guess from marketing materials that I watched a long time ago, I'd say it was probably 18 miles per hour is like the maximum here. Um, so I'm just gonna do full speed between the stop signs. I think that's what most people are gonna do. But it's worth noting that if you are gonna go slower than that, you're probably gonna get more range. The physics, the math would dictate that that would be so. The other thing that matters here, of course, is uh, the amount of mass uh, on your payload, which is in this case me and in your case, you. So for what it's worth, I weigh just a little under 90 pounds, or 190 pounds, excuse me, <laughs> 90 pounds. First stop sign, coasting up to it, using the brake. The brake. Do these have regenerative braking where when you are either decelerating or braking, do they put power back into the batteries? Like my electric car, like a Tesla? No. These do not. These are just purely a motor to drive it forward and nothing else.
There's one lap. I'm noticing as I go from a stop that it's accelerating a little slower. Another lap. That's three. Four. Still going. So I was wrong, there is one side of the lake that has the slightest grade to it. I'm on the downhill side of that grade right now, so I'm getting a little help. But um, on this side of this particular lake, um, you know, it, it goes up and down a little bit. And it's, it's very slight, but when I'm on the upgrade now, and I'm in the middle of lap four, headed for lap five, um, I can feel the motor is straining a little bit to get up that grade. Really starting to slow down now. That last stop I just made, <clears throat> excuse me, was hard to get going from. This is lap five right here. And you can see I'm, I'm at full throttle. I'm questioning whether I'm going to make it all the way around this time. Okay, it's really dragging and I'm diametric from across this lake from my car. I'm afraid to stop here even. Yeah, not happy. But still rolling. I got two more stops and I'm only halfway around this lap. Sorry, I had a camera failure here and so you can't hear the audio, so I'm just doing an overdub here. But here I did a final stop on this lap and I'm kicking it to get it going because the battery just didn't have the power to get it moving again and I am completing the final lap on this scooter. And this is lap number six. And that is as many as I got. Okay, back into the car to get scooter number two. So that one was the one that has been used a lot more. Um, how many trips has that one done? I couldn't tell you. A lot. Um, many tens of trips, but probably not a hundred trips. Um, let's call it 50 or 60 trips to somewhere. Uh, and so we got six laps out of that. I don't have my seatbelt on. <sighs> okay, so back at the house, I'm going to grab scooter number two. This is the one that rarely has gotten ridden. And so I'm calling this one as close to new out of the box as I can, as far as the number of discharges and charge cycles that it's had. So again, uh, we got two different scooters. One of them has very few discharge and charge cycles. The other one has many. And what does that mean? Well, I mean, that means if you have not bought one of these, you're wondering, well, how far will it go? And after I've owned it for a while, how far will it go? You know, that's really what we're establishing here. And because I happen to own two of them, because I have twin daughters, um, you know, I'm in a unique position to do this test.
There's lap one. Lap two. Lap four. You guys keep seeing the same part of this lake. But this is the part that matters. And this is lap five. Still going pretty strong. This is lap six. Slower, but still a healthy pace. So while I'm riding here, what can I say about comfort? Um, you know, you don't ride it for long, long periods of time anyways, but uh, the seat height is adjustable. The seat is reasonably cushy and it's fine. Um, I expect after these two tests in a row that my uh, glutes are gonna be a little numb, but uh, you know, it, it's fine. You wouldn't normally ride two in a row like this back to back. Yeah, this is significantly better. Lap seven right here, slower but still strong. Another failure of the camera that has the microphone recording my voice, but this is lap eight. And while a little slower, it's still going pretty strong. This is lap nine, much slower now. Uh, frankly worried that I won't make 10, but for you guys, of course, I gotta keep going. Really slow. I'm diametric again from where my car is, so halfway around. Um, I think I'll make it, but I may have to give a couple kicks with my foot. We'll see, I'm about to the top of this grade, but it is getting really slow. And of course, when it gets slow, you know, it's a little bit harder to keep the thing upright because it's gyroscopic force keeps, uh, that's what makes bicycles easy to ride. I mean, I can ride, but this is fine. I'm on the home stretch. Hang in there, baby. Well, I think I'll make it, but I'm not going to attempt another lap around the lake. So, here's a stop sign, but I'm going so slow, there's no point in even really hitting the brake, you know. Just from a practical standpoint, that's about as much as I'd stop anyways with no traffic around, of course. Well, okay, so here's the end of lap 10, and I'm calling it, you know, I'm still under propulsion. But like, if I tried to go from a dead stop now, here's what I get. It's going, but really, not really. So 10 and something, let's call it that. Maybe the bike would have gone, oh, 10 and a quarter. End of riding test. So I've put them away and they're both charging again. Um, let's summarize what we've learned here. Range. We had two machines on the same track and we obviously had a very big difference uh, between the two machines in the range. 
uh, one machine has had very little use. If it's had 10 rides, I'd be surprised. And the other one has probably had 50 or 60 rides. So in rough numbers, we had 10 laps versus six laps. Really it was 10 and a quarter, let's call it. So let's do the math. So the scooter that had uh, six laps at 1.05 miles per lap is 6.3 miles of range. Whereas the other machine had 10 laps, let's call it, uh, let's just call it 10 laps. Easy, even number. You, you and I both know it went a little further than that, or could have. Um, 10 times 10.05 is 10.5. So you got 10 and a half miles for a new machine versus uh, 6.3 miles for a machine with 50 or 60 trips on it, or 50 or 60 discharge and charge cycles. A um, lot of variability here possible. Uh, if you had short discharge cycles and then recharge, uh, that's going to be different from lots and lots of full discharge cycles and recharge. Uh, I would guess in most cases, I've probably used this one in like a half to three quarter discharge and then recharge it each time. This one that we use all the time. So, you know, there's that. And other than that, comfort's okay. I mean, now I've been on it for 16 something 16.8 miles i just rode an eco smart scooter and you know my butt is feeling it but hey 16.3.8 miles it's pretty good um what else can i say they're reliable charge time i don't know folks uh i charge it and then i go in the house and i come back like a day later or even days later and it's fully charged um, so if you're going to use one of these where you're charging and going and charging and going, I can't answer that. Um, I guess I would probably recommend against this machine for that kind of use because if you're using it that much, well, then you're going to have, you know, 50 or 60 cycles pretty fast. Um, and I don't know if it would last you a year before you need batteries in that particular case. But how do we use it? You know, I hop on it and I run up to the grocery store and I can grab two bags of groceries in that basket and it's great. And I don't have to fire up the car. Uh, with gas prices being what they are, that's fun. I just, I love it. And I get what I need done, done. And I get it done at a pace I need. Like 18 miles an hour is fast enough. I get there quickly, I get home quickly. Could I do it faster in a car? Nominally. Um, what else? Oh, the other thing I've used it for, now my grocery store is one and a half miles away, so it's three miles round trip. Um, but there's also a uh, Acura dealership where I've taken my wife's car in, you've seen it in this video, for repair and you know you got to leave the car well i'll throw one of the scooters the one that we use all the time into the back of the car because it'll fit in a regular suv no problem and uh, drive to the dealership drop my car and then just ride the scooter home and then it doesn't take two people to do that kind of a trip um, i like that about it now you know, I'm a guy, I'm relatively uh, robust and strong. I can lift this thing in there, no problem. If you're a bit more frail than me, I would not recommend lifting this scooter into uh, a vehicle. Um, it's pretty heavy, I guess. You know, I don't have an exact weight for you. Uh, maybe I'll pop that up on the screen because I'll look it up or I'll determine what it is and here's your weight for what it's worth. Um, but it's a little awkward to lift in, and uh, it, I, you know, I guess I can't recommend a lot of that for someone that isn't uh, my size and my strength. Uh, but for you guys out there who are healthy, it's not that big a deal. Uh, so it can be used in that way. 
Um, how much gas have I saved over the course of owning these things? A lot. And then, you know, here in California, we're paying upwards of $6 a gallon, sometimes more than that. And uh, I purchased these around $350 a piece. So if you need some transportation to go less than, let's say, six miles, because it's kind of the usable range of a used machine, um, hey, great, more power to you. If you're like at a school uh, and you want to take the charger along, it's a very small charger, you could do that. And if there's a place to plug it in, you know, while you're in class, well, then you can extend your range, right? Um, the charger is small enough to where you could easily do that. Um, that's all I'm going to say. If you are interested in how to assemble a, a Razor EcoSmart scooter uh, because you've watched this video and decided to buy one, Here's a video on how to put one together out of the box. And if you like this kind of content, if you like to learn about reviews of all things that have to do with uh, being on two wheels, mostly motorcycles, but I do stuff like this too, um, click like if you liked this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.